together and uh, go through His name is wonderful, sing His name is wonderful together and uh, get into the message here very shortly. So let's all stand. see someone saved. Uh, you know, people are always watching. Neighbors are watching. Co-workers are watching. Everybody's watching. So we want to see God glorified in it. And uh, so just pray to that end that, um, that I can encourage them to seek Christ and to, uh, to be saved. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. 
offer your goodness to us this week. Father, we thank you for the, um, the mercies that are new every morning. Father, you've been so good to us and far better than we than we deserve. And Father, I pray that you just continue to have your will and your way uh, here in our lives and in this church. That uh, Father, that you would be glorified in all that's said and done. Father, we pray a special time now with this offering that you would use it for the furtherance of the gospel to the saving of souls. And, uh, Father, to add uh, into your kingdom and that your name be glorified. And Father, we just pray that you would do it all according to your will. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Pray for those that are on en route to get here and uh, for safety. And Galatians chapter 2. You can remain seated. I'll read verses 11 through 21. And, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. <coughs> says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sins? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Paul is making it very clear to Galatia that you need to not focus so much on the law. Uh, the law pointed you to Christ. And now we have Christ and his grace, and they are still trying to fulfill and uh, do all that the law commands as if it is what is going to save them. And we know that's not the case. 
uh, uh, Paul also brings about something that we're going to look at tonight, and it's a place called Antioch. And there was much trouble, troubling things that happened in Antioch. Why would Paul uh, mention this? Well, there's much trouble in Galatia. There's a lot that's taking place. And you can learn a lot from what is going on by learning and watching how it's happened in others as well. Uh, we have um, written epistles before us. We've written epistles, known and read of all men. Uh, we have um, those before us that we can look at and see as an example. And, and we can see what has happened and what has taken place and say, ah, I don't have to do the same thing. I don't have to make the same mistake. I don't have to go through everything they went through and be as troubled as they were because uh, I, I can learn from them. I don't have to go through that. That's what we do as parents teaching our children. I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I made. I don't want you to go through what I went through. So I'm telling you and teaching you and showing you what I did and how it turned out for me so that it doesn't turn out that way for you. So we're going to dive into looking at Antioch and a few things that took place there. And uh, I pray that, uh, that we learn something from it tonight. So we'll go to God in prayer and uh, get into it. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around your word. Father, I pray that something said tonight that challenges us as Christians, that draws us closer to you, Father, that uh, that we are uh, conformed more and more to your image and uh, can, can do what even more for you while we're here on this earth. And Father, I pray that you would take this time now and that you would use it for your honor and glory, that you would hide me behind the cross, that you would say what needs to be said here tonight. And Father, we lift you up and magnify you and glorify you. And Father, we pray for for any loss that may be watching that, or that may come in, that they sense the, the need to repent of sin and become born again before it's too late. Uh, their, their good is no good, as we're seeing here. We can't justify ourselves. It's only by the grace of God that any man or any woman can come to know Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for them here and now that they come to know you before it's too late. Uh, when he got back, uh, they were they, they continued with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. And and Peter gave them the uh, testimony of what took place. Jump to verse 12. And behold, immediately there were three men already come to the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me. And when we entered into the man's house, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said to him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Then remember I the word of the Lord, how, he, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, 
but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? God sent me to these people. God had me go and preach to these people. God had me deliver the gospel to these people. And these people, as a result of God's calling and God's leading, got saved. Boy, who can argue that? But there was some argument. There was some contention. Hey, you went in amongst uncircumcised people. You went in amongst people that, that are not like us. You went in amongst the people who, who don't affiliate with us. You went in amongst the people that, that we don't socialize with. You went in amongst the people that we have nothing to do with. Who do you think you are? And here Peter says, hey, who do y'all think y'all are? God sent me. God told me to go. Who am I to reply against God? We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to serve God. We ought to do what God is telling us to do. Boy, God sent me. I better go. That's what Peter's saying here. But that troubled him. That troubled him. He said, well, how do you know that? Not long after this challenge, not long after this contention, God moves in a mighty way in Antioch. On the way here, I jotted a note down, and I said there were some Jews with the gospel unwilling to preach to the Gentiles. And then there were some Jews without the gospel ready to put laws and customs on the Gentiles. What a shame. Well, we, we ought to be ready in a moment's notice to just give the gospel to somebody. What a shame that the lost world is ready quicker to go and give somebody something that is false than we are to publish the gospel. I'll turn it off and use this one, but if that helps it, we'll just do that. I don't want to distract. I think that's it. Boy, what a shame that some people... Uh, some Christians would, would withhold the gospel from someone because, well, they don't look like me. Well, they don't talk like me. They don't behave like me. Well, look at all the tattoos on them. Well, he just doesn't look like he would have received Christ. Have you heard the way he talks? Have you seen the way he carried himself? And such were some of you. But you're washed now. But we get caught up on the look of a thing. and Well, you're over there with people that, who are uncircumcised. And you're over there with people that don't look like us. That's who needs the gospel. That's who needs the truth. That's who needs to hear of Christ. So they can look like us and behave like us and sound like us and call God their father as well. How else will they hear that if we don't tell them? Somebody's got to go and somebody's got to tell them. Boy, in verse 19 of Acts 11, we see what, what begins to happen in Antioch. Acts chapter 11 and verse 19. Acts 11, 19 says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. Oh, so many people got saved behind Stephen being stoned. Tragedy and rejoicing in heaven. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch. That's where we are tonight. Preaching the word to none, here it is, none but unto the Jews only. What a shame that we do that sometimes. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord. Or somebody gave the Gentiles the gospel. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. For they got excited. Then tidings of these things came to the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came and had seen the grace of God, boy, these people, guess what? They
they sound like us. Boy, they worship God like us. Boy, they sing songs of praise like us. Boy, they are on fire for God. Look what God has done. When he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Hey, don't lose what you have. Boy, he's excited about this thing. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost <clears throat> and of much and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord. Boy, something's happened at Antioch. Boy, it's revival at Antioch. Boy, the gospel is spreading at Antioch. Barnabas is sent from, from Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem, to Antioch to witness and see, and he got excited. Boy, he's excited. Hey, hey, don't lose what y'all have. And just a little while ago, nobody was talking to them. Nobody was telling them. Nobody was preaching to them. But when they got it, boy, they latched hold of it. They ate it up. No, they weren't Jews. But they became Jews grafted into the family of God by the grace of God. Boy, this is something that, that we have. We have no control over. They had a love for God. They had a, a zeal for God. Boy, when the seed hit Antioch, it fell on good ground. And they were excited. And they were thrilled. And they were growing. These people are on fire for God. Not only would they send Barnabas back, but others would come as well, wanting to see all that God was doing in Antioch. We've kind of read about it already. By this time, Paul has been persecuted. Stones left for dead. You start to see things happen. And he was going through Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, uh, places like that. Turn to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. And look at verse 19. It's amazing how all this fits together. Acts chapter 14 and verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Here we go again. Who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. When he had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned. challenge and have a zeal for God. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10 says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now Antioch, as you can see, is being troubled. Well, they witnessed all stone, all because uh, Paul is preaching the gospel. So here are these people within our community uh, who are telling us that we need to keep their customs and their laws, and then they turned a crowd of people in our community against the man who was preaching the grace of God and stoned him. Then we see this same man come up into the community again after having been stoned and continue to preach God. Boy, there's a lot happening over here. They're troubled by those who are lost. Don't you know that they'll both, there are lost people out there who are troubled by lost people? Hey, there are saved people too in cities and communities and churches who are troubled by lost people. We shouldn't allow the lost to have such an effect on us. But boy, they were gathering together in great crowds, and we see it happening today. Riots. We're going to have a parade and march. We're going to stand against the house of God, the people of God. What did we do? We just preach the grace of God. Boy, we didn't come and call you out and point you out. We just preach God's word, preach against sin, and all of a sudden, Satan doesn't like it. We're going to have something to say about what you're saying and about what you're doing. 
Uh, we, we want to limit and regulate what you can preach in the pulpit. Well, I'll never forget seeing that try to take place in Texas. They wanted to regulate what a pastor was preaching. The mayor sent a letter. I need to see your messages before you preach it. That makes no sense to me. Boy, that, that's where the world will go, though. And as soon as you give in to it, boy, we got you. We're we going to capitalize on this, and we're going to regulate this thing throughout the entire nation because guess what? Satan doesn't want people to hear the truth of God's words. He wants them trouble. He wants them in confusion. He wants them messed up. Boy, Antioch is troubled. Just as the Galatians have been troubled by the Jews. Don't think it's ironic that Paul is mentioning Antioch here to Galatians. Boy, it's got a purpose. Boy, I, I love the fact that when my children are going through things, I can use an analogy. I can show them my experience. Well, when I was your age, and this happened to me. This is what I did. I handled it wrong. I'm trying to help you not handle it wrong. Or I'm trying to guide you and make sure and protect you right now because I know what's coming and you don't even see it yet. Well, that's what Paul is doing. And he didn't even have to care. Paul didn't even have to pick up pen. He could have just let what was happening in Galatia happen. But you see his love for these people. Boy, the, the love that's there, they just, they just love these people. Look at Acts chapter 15. Acts 15 and verse 1. A certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Boy, that's what they're teaching. That's what they're preaching. That's what they're telling. Uh, but we receive the grace of God, but hold on, what is this you say? This is why we better know our Bible. This is why we better know the word of God. Paul and Barnabas go up to Jerusalem when they hear all this is taking place. And uh, they, they get with the leaders and the elders in the church. And there's a discussion and they're sent back. Look at verse 23. They're sent back to Antioch. And uh, you find in verse 23. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles. In Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you, see that word, troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. We're writing a letter and they're going to talk to you face to face. This thing is important. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Well, God's not here burdening us. Yet you see them being burdened, listening to people. Verse 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Verse 29, that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and, and keep from fornication from which if you keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Nothing about keeping of the law and uh, the circumcision and uncircumcision. None of that. Boy, just the grace of God. Imagine that. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. When they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. They gave them the letter. Which, when they had read, they rejoiced. Well, that's what God's word does when we read it, boy. Woo! I don't know what they were talking about out there, but boy, I have peace in this right here. I don't know what all they're confused with. I was talking to uh, Pastor Burris um, a couple days ago when he was telling me some things that he's heard recently that people are saying. He said, have you ever heard such a thing? <laughs> Papa, I've never, ever, ever heard that. And that is just out there. He said, 
said, well, that's what they're teaching people. He said, you can go into the community right now and hear that, and people are so confused by it because that's what they're teaching. You think it's important that we teach Christ, that we preach Christ? Very important. Uh, the first lesson in all of this, there's a couple valuable lessons. Don't be troubled by what's not in God's word. Don't get so caught up on what people are saying and we haven't proven it in scripture. That was another thing he said. That they don't have the first scripture. You can't find what they're saying in scripture. You can't find it. Scripture doesn't even describe it briefly anything. Nothing. And they've come up with something and if, if they made it sound spectacular, but it's weird. And if you think about it, it's contrary. goes against the Bible. And Satan's out there planting seeds as well, doing everything he can to see people lost. You know, they could have remained troubled and become ineffective to God. Because they'd have been caught up more on customs and law instead of grace. They'd have been caught up on did, did we keep everything that Moses taught, that Moses that Moses preached? Did, did we keep everything that's, that's in the, the... Well, hold on now. We're no longer under the law. We're under grace. Well, I'm glad for the grace of God. I'm glad that Christ fulfilled the law. But I'm so grateful for his grace. So they would have become useless because they would have been caught up on something that was not the grace of God. And I don't want us to ever get there where we are caught up on something that God doesn't want us caught up on. But we're wasting time, days, months, years trying to keep up with laws and traditions and customs. And did we do that right over there? Well, no, you need to do more. Yes, let's do more because they said we need to. They have excluded Christ. They, they removed the grace of God. No, you're, you're under bondage. You're, you're under our yoke. We tell you what to do. No, Christ tells me what to do. I'm not under the law. I am under grace. Boy, they're troubled by people that come in. But you know what's sad? Is when Christians are troubled by Christians. That's sad. Antioch is troubled in our text by Peter's behavior. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. For all this has taken place in Galatia, in, in, uh, in, in Antioch. All this that has taken place in Antioch. Boy, you see the evidence of God. You see Satan attacking the work of God. And then all of a sudden, you see Christians that can't get along. We see some of that today, too. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul was speaking, I withstood him to the face. Because he was to be blinded. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Oh, here we go all over again. Boy, we heard it from the laws. And all of a sudden, can you imagine we're all fellowshipping here together? We're sitting down, we're eating. Uh, a few people of, of, um, that we hold in high regard come in. Boy, they are, they are well known across the nation as uh, leaders and pastors in the communities. And they've built great works for God. And they come in and all of a sudden people get up and leave out the back door. And you sit there wondering, what just happened? Well, let's look at what just happened. People from Jerusalem just came in. Um, in Jerusalem, they really preached heavy and taught. And, and preach to those in the circumcision. And some of these guys were with them. And now they're not with us. Oh. I don't ever want us to be a Christian. 
Christian that causes another Christian to be troubled. That is not our position. That's not our job. Now, if they're troubled because God's word is speaking to their heart, then so be it. Preach on. Amen. That's what we want. But we want God to work and stir our hearts. But I don't want to get to a place where I am troubling someone by my actions and my behavior and the way I carry myself around them. And I'll tell you, I'm just going to say it. I've been troubled a few times with some places I've been. I have been. I've had some things said to me and I thought, we serve the same God. <laughs> I mean, you call him father, I call him father. I came here to, to hear from God. And I'm hearing from you. Hmm. Well, we want people to hear from God. And I don't ever want my big mouth to get in the way of that. I don't. I don't want my, my character to get in, in the way and interfere with that. Who I am to, to interfere. Boy, I need to get up out the way and sit down and shut up somewhere if that's what's going to take place. I'm, I'm overstepping. I, I am interfering with what belongs to God. Boy, God gets pretty uh, pretty uh, uptight about his children being offended, too. That's not going to take lightly. It is not our place to cause that uh, um, that confusion, that trouble. Well, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. Spiritual leaders that gave us comfort, they wrote these letters to us. They come in. Peter Lee, Barnabas, the brother of consolation. Let me tell you how deep this thing is. The brother known for consoling him. He's the one that came and told us to keep on keeping on. He got it in letter. And of, of others with him. Paul said, now hold on a minute. We got to deal with this. And we got to deal with it right now. Now I'm going to try really quickly because I, I'm getting, I'm taking a lot of time and I don't want to take too much more time. But there's a valuable lesson here. Paul didn't rebuke the, and the elders that came down from Jerusalem. Paul didn't rebuke Barnabas. Paul didn't rebuke the others And all this time, Peter was afraid of getting rebuked, so he got up and moved out the way. You know what? We should just do right. Even if we think somebody's going to rebuke us for doing right, just do right. Don't worry about or care what they're going to say or think or how they're going to handle this thing. If it's of God, then do right. Because he ended up getting rebuked anyway. Boy, he was, I, I, I don't want them to fuss at me. I don't, I mean, I. I, I, I have been in this place before. They brought me before everybody and rebuked me and contended with me. They said, what are you doing over there preaching to Cornelius? Well, who are you? Who are you to go and take the gospel to the Gentiles? Well, God sent me. Well, here he is with that thought in his mind. I can picture that conversation running back through his mind as they come in. I might have got up to you. But let it challenge us. Not to fear man. Not to fear man and, and our actions that should be based on the word of God be based on a man. Be based on someone other than the Christ who we serve. Boy, this, this is trouble all over again because Peter was wrong. Trouble by the laws Troubled by the sin. I don't ever want us to be in that place. Be very careful what we do. And here's this point. I, I think this is key. Every one of us in this room, whether we realize it or not, there's a young Barnabas and others who are watching your every move. And when you get up, I guess I should get up. You know, Barnabas wasn't one of the apostles. Peter was one of the apostles. And, and 
for Barnabas, it's more like he, he, he saw all the miracles that Jesus did. Well, he was, he was with him everywhere that he went. But that's the one that walked on the water. Well, he cut a man's ear off turning the thing over. Well, this is the one that, that went running to the graveside of our Savior. But uh, he's getting up. It doesn't feel right, but he's getting up. I guess I better get up too. Be very careful because others are watching and others are following. Boy, I was challenged as a husband. I was challenged as a father to be very careful what we do. To make sure that everything we do is based on the word of God because Peter was wrong. Peter based his actions on other men. And others follow suit. And it troubled the entire church. I, I don't want that to be said of me. That I have caused the trouble was based on flesh and blood, not on Christ. His, his action and his behavior was not based on God's word and not in the comfort that God gives. That he thought about it, he said, you know what? If I get up from here, they're going to be wondering what happened. If I get up from here and if I move, they're going to be wondering what just took place. No, Peter was more concerned about himself. And when you're more concerned about yourself, you're going to hurt others. You're going to. Peter was so locked in on making sure that I don't want them to review me. I don't want them to be angry at me. But he wasn't concerned with what is going to happen to these people in Antioch. Well, we need to have that fear for others. His behavior caused the others to be discomforted. Those of Antioch to be discomforted. Let's be very careful how we live. I believe that the certain that came from James were coming to see what God was doing. But here's another example. Peter saw them and was afraid. You know, you, you may correct some things in your life, but you want to make sure it is evident that it's corrected. Because when, he, when they came in, Peter was still under the mind frame of traditions. Now, I believe they came in just wanting to see. But Peter had a history with them. And it wasn't comfortable for them. And it's, we need to be very careful how we read. Let's not say one thing, but our presence interpret another. Let's not publicize one thing, but our actions convey another. Boy, boy, they, they're coming to see you. And, and Peter's mind, he's thinking, oh, no, they're coming to see what I'm doing. <laughs> they're coming to see where I'm at. In his mind, he's thinking, boy, I'm in trouble. We should have been more concerned about them. Don't be troubled by other people. Don't have more of a fear for man than you have for God in his heart. That's where the trouble comes from. Now, Paul rebukes Peter before them all. He didn't rebuke those from Jerusalem. He didn't rebuke Barnabas. He rebuked Peter. He went to where the trouble started. A man with a fearful heart and the wrong behavior. A man who, who um, it, it just equaled the wrong outcome. Because he became afraid. Hey, when Peter was afraid as he was walking on the water, bloop, he began to drown. That's what happens when we allow fear to control us. Boy, they came in and he is afraid. And when we get fearful, you notice we do things kind of rashly. We just kind of try to, okay, let me get out of this situation. We're not thinking right. We're not behaving right because we are afraid. And that fear shouldn't have, have been there. Shouldn't have trusted in God. That fear that shouldn't have been caused Look at verse 14 of Galatians. Let's try to wrap this up here. 
But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, did you catch that? Hey, you're a Jew, but I like the Gentiles. And not as do the Jews. Why compellest thou the Jews to live as the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. What are you thinking, Peter? What are you doing? Boy, you're, you're sitting here locked in on, on people, and you need to be locked in on Christ. Because now you've got these people in Antioch thinking, oh man, maybe we should have been keeping the law. Oh man, maybe we should have been keeping the customs. Well, we've been left here troubled again. Wake up, Peter. Well, uh, Paul's doing everything he can to make this clear. We don't follow Jewish customs. We receive the grace of God, and we preach the grace of God to them. We know that we're not under the law. We're under grace. And then walking away, you're telling the people in Antioch, listen to this, you're not good enough. You need to do more. You're not where we are. You're not on our level. You need to, to accomplish some other things before I'll sit and eat with you. What a shame. But that's the message that was being sent. Paul had some questions. He said, hey, wait a minute, Peter. How are you going to push something on somebody you're not even doing it yourself? We should challenge anybody that takes the comfort of any child away from God away from them. Hey, man, what are you doing? Hey, well, we should be about their peace, not their discomfort. But we should be doing everything to show them and teach them the grace of God, not put a greater yoke upon them. 15 10 says, Now therefore, why tempt ye God and put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they don't trouble them. Galatia was troubled, and they're dealing with something here. And so was Antioch. An unnecessary burden was placed upon them. And Paul took what was happening in Antioch and said, Hey, Galatia. First of all, you're not the first to go through this. You're not the first to experience this. Let me point you to Antioch. Let me show you what they went through. As a matter of fact, as I'm showing you that, let me tell you my testimony. Let me tell you what I went through in Antioch. Let me tell you what I had to deal with in Antioch. And as he's doing that, he's pointing them back. They get to see, boy, that thing got out of hand over there. Hey, Galatia, that thing got out of hand over there. But I'm trying to tell you about a picture. And that's what he's doing here. You know, there's no way to keep the whole law and trying to do so for salvation. You frustrate the grace of God. Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Well, I know that I was saved by his grace. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm not, I'm not um, trying to keep and maintain all of the laws and customs and traditions. Boy, we, we would never attain and never keep all of that. We couldn't do it. But I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by trying to do it. I'm grateful for his grace. I'm not going to sit here and say, your grace isn't enough for me. No, your grace is all I need. I understand Peter. We cannot allow our fear to cause others to be troubled, especially when it comes to doctrine. For he was so afraid of what they were going to say that he became wrong. He, he ended up doing wrong. No doubt, no doubt, many things went through their mind. We need to walk carefully with the people of God. And Paul is carefully, I believe, carefully setting at ease the hearts of the world. Hey, hey, I know you're troubled right now. I know there's a burden on you. I know there's a yoke that's too heavy for you to bear. But let me show you why you don't need to be doing it. 
You're reading that good. The same thing happened in Antioch. The same thing. And it got deep in Antioch. Galatia, I'm trying to tell you, it got deep over there. Let me tell you, don't frustrate the ways of God. I, I think that letter right there, I, I, I believe if they, as they were reading that, it's like, That's what grace is. And that's what we need to be teaching. To always come in contact with the grace of God. I'm not here to, to burn a thing. I'm not here to place a yoke uh, that God didn't get on anyone. That is not my job. I'm here to preach the grace of God. And teach the grace of God. Boy, God's goodness. I'm not here to say, well, no, you need to do this and you need to do that. No, the, the grace of God. Grace does much more than that. Boy, I'm grateful for his grace. There's trouble in Antioch. The boy and they, they realized that they didn't have to keep all that stuff. It was peace. Peter came in and was troubled uh, with what, was what, what happened when they came in from Jerusalem. And those in Antioch are troubled again. But I believe when Peter stood up in, when uh, Paul stood up in Peter's face in front of all of them and dealt with this, it did this to those who are Okay. We're good. Everything's fine. And everything won't. What happened? Peter was true. He allowed something to enter into his mind. And it called others. something was said to challenge us as Christians to draw us closer to you. Father, help us be more considerate of those around us than we are of ourselves. Yeah, we, we, it's, it's easy, it's natural for us to protect us. But Lord, let it become more easy and more natural to protect others. Make sure that others know of your grace not be focused on us. Paul said, I die daily. I'll, I'll spend and gladly be spent. Paul knew that it came with sacrifice. Father, don't, don't allow us to cause another child of God to be troubled by something that we do. Father, help us to bring about that peace in their life. Just like Paul did when he challenged There was great comfort that came over them. Father, we want nothing more than the comfort of your children. Father, help us here at Grace Bible Baptist Church to be about that. Not seeking our own, not looking for what we can get out of this, but the comfort of others. Father, we just look to you to bless. In Jesus' precious name we pray and thank you.